What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Gamer Duo here, welcoming you back to another episode of the Power Rankings Week 13 edition. And y'all, I'm, of course, recording this literally as soon as the Ravens and Steelers play. Um, and speaking of which, I don't know how that game is going to go. Um, their Power Rankings are not um, really going to be mess mess with too much this week because... I didn't want to get my power rankings up on Thursday. I wanted to get them up today. And yeah, I, I could have got them up later, but I worked two to eight. So I couldn't get them up later because I want to stream. So it's just prioritizing, figuring out what I want to do. Um, but let's go ahead and start at the beginning. So yeah, so the, the Patriots the, or the Steelers and the Ravens aren't really going to be messed with that much. Ravens catch a lucky, lucky break this week. Um, but yeah, so of course, 32nd, we got the New York Jets. They get destroyed um, by the Dolphins, uh, 20 to 3, which is kind of an oof. Um, next, we have the uh, Jaguars, who actually played it close against the Browns. And I was half tempted to kind of move them up from this 31 spot and put the Bengals there. Um, but the only reason I didn't um, is because. Honestly, I don't really... There's too little to know. And... Like, honestly, I probably should have moved them. And the more that I think about it, the more I would say, yeah, they probably deserve to be like 28, 29. But they've not found ways to win. They have not been able to do anything. They're not... They're just not playing well at all. Um, either. So... I mean, this this whole, like, side is all bottom-of-the-barrel teams that aren't really playing well. Um, that's what the red is. So, next we have the Cincinnati Bengals, who <clears throat> did not play a good game against the Giants. Um, Dak, or not Dak Prescott, oh my god. Um, Daniel Jones is injured. Um, and so that kind of is going to prevent them from being able to do stuff. But even with him injured and missing the quarterback, they still... Couldn't score seven. God, I'm yawning. I couldn't score 20 points, which is not good for them. Um, defense played like they should have, but the offense is just, it's its lackluster. These are games, I think, with Joe Burrow, they would have won. But now that they don't have Joe Burrow, they're not going to. Um, next, we have Dallas, who got just walloped by the Washington football team. And the Washington football team kind of proved why they're the better team and why they're superior in the division. Um, I believe they actually have their third win in the division uh, after sweeping the Dallas Cowboys and beating the uh, um, Eagles. So that's their third win in the division. That's nice for them. Um, they've played well in the division, and I think that's gonna, uh, or the, the, right, football team, but, yeah, Dallas is just, they're basically out of the count at this point. Um, uh, Jerry Jones was like, oh my god, the, we've had more struggles with the Broncos, uh, uh, like, the Broncos, I'm like, bruh, you, you actually played with a rookie quarterback, yeah, it was a rookie quarterback, but the Broncos didn't play with a single quarterback and had a wide receiver at quarterback, so, yeah, it's just like, Jerry Jones is making excuses now, and it's like, yeah, good job. That's not going to help you at all. Next, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. Can we just can we just um, quantify this right now? As a Seahawks fan, like, bruh, Doug Peterson is a terrible coach. The Eagles could have won this game. They really could have. Our offense was pretty lackluster. Um, but it like, and of course, and that's something we we're talking about. Our defense was really good. And I really love the Seahawks defense this week, but bruh, the Eagles take your points. Like, you know, Carson Wentz has been struggling on the season. It's not a new thing at all. Um, take your points, make it within an eight point game. And then see you have Seattle do their thing from the 25-yard line instead of the 20-yard line. 
Um, and then you go try and get the other eight points. It's that simple. Doug Peterson does not coach to win. And that's a big issue that I've noticed multiple times uh, with Doug Peterson. So he definitely needs to be better. Um, I don't think he will become better, and that's where that's where the problem lies. I think that Philly is going to have a coaching change, and if they don't, I will be a little bit sad for them. But I think this is the year Philly needs to make a coaching change and make the shift. Um, honestly, yeah, Doug Peterson is such a bad coach. Like Mike McCarthy is not great with Dallas, but Dallas has had some issues and sustained some issues. The Bengals lost Joe Burrow, so I don't think Zach Taylor's going to go. Um, and Adam Gase, obviously, is going to go, and the Jacksonville Jaguars coach is probably going to go, too. So, like, there's coaches that are probably going to go, and you can tell that. The Eagles are like, oh, will they go? Will they not? They better. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. They better. Um, because the Eagles could have won that game and been first in the division, but here we are. Uh, next we got the Denver Broncos dropping a spot last week. They put, I'm not going to punish them too bad for their 31 to three loss to the Saints. One, the Saints are extremely good. Two, they had no quarterbacks. They had no way to compete. And this is also a game that you kind of expected them not to do good anyway. So like it kind of all balances out and balances each other out. Next, we have the Washington football team moving up a spot, going to number 26. Honestly, the Washington football team played well. They did their thing. Um, and they demolished another divisional opponent. This is why we have them up here. They're, they're not a bad team at all. They're a team that's going to get it done. Um, I was actually thinking of moving them to 25, but I decided that I'm going to keep the New York Giants at 25 um, because, you know, even though they lost Colt McCoy, um, it'll be interesting to see kind of how the team responds, and I'm not sure. I do think they'll lose to Seattle, but I think that a lot of this division is going to lose next week. So we'll kind of figure out as we go on. But this division, I think, will have a leader at 4-8 and eight by the end of next week. Uh, we have the Detroit Lions also dropping a spot down to 24. Honestly, the Lions, I don't really know how to explain this Lions team. Um, they end up, you know, losing in a ridiculous fashion to the Houston Texans. Lost by, I think it was 16, and that needs to fi be fixed fast, because, and they, I think that it will start becoming more and more fixed, uh, but Matt Patricia has got some work to do, um, and, or actually not Matt, or not Matt Patricia, uh, their Arrow head coach, <sighs> has some work to do, I'm glad Patricia is fired, but. We'll kind of see how they play against the Bears. This might be an opportunity for them to knock the Bears down in the pedestal. Um, so that'll be a good opportunity for them, and we'll see what happens. Next, we have the all LA Chargers, who are finally going to take a dip, drop four, um, down to 23. I've been kind of wanting this Chargers team to be better, and they just they have not. They are a... To abysmal three and eight now um and they just continue to lose games and not play well um they play against the patriots this week so they have a close matchup this week and this is the week where we're really gonna see are they competitive in this orange tier um this is a tier that i know that they're gonna stay the entire rest of the season unless something really drastically happens because i 100 percent see them being better than all of these teams over here. Um, but a couple teams moved up, um, which actually is gonna, was going to hurt their power rankings a little bit more. But also just the fact that, they, again, they're not winning. They're not capitalizing on these games. And it's just not – it's just showing. Um, next, we have the Atlanta Falcons. After smacking the internal shoot uh, – smacking the eternal shoot out of the freaking – um. Oh, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. It just was just wow. Yeah, like that's all I can say. Forty three to six. Like they've played better and they've gotten better over these weeks. Um, I don't think they're good enough to consider like a top five. Obviously, they're not. Um, because if they were, they would have been there at the beginning of the season. But honestly, this team is just showing a lot of poise and a lot of spoiler potential for uh, a lot of the bigger teams like the Buccaneers, 
um, and the Saints and other teams like that. Like they they're play they're gonna start playing spoiler, and it'll be interesting to see can they officially play spoiler against some of these teams? Because if they do, then that literally will make a big difference and shake up the NFC playoff picture. in ways that we didn't imagine happening from this Falcons team. Next, we have the New England Patriots staying put at 21 after their last second win against the Cardinals. Honestly, I didn't see anything too surprising. Um, This was just a Bella being a Belichick coached, and they're not bad. They're not a bad team whatsoever, but they are a team that I am like, eh, Um, because if Isaiah Simmons wasn't called for that 15-yard penalty... Um, then it would have been tied still, probably more than likely. They wouldn't have to go for the field goal, um, and it'd go to overtime. Who knows what would have happened in overtime, but, um, but here we are. Um, the Patriots won, which is totally fine. Um, I'm actually 100% happy with that because that's a better result for me as a Seahawks fan, but I'm also like, you know, when games get decided by a, a call, it gets kind of like, oh, well, that, that, then they were kind of close to each other. In, you know, so the Patriots overplayed, which is good, but uh, we'll see how they play against the Chargers. You know, they're very close, and it'll be cool to see. Uh, next, we got the San Francisco 49ers moving up two spots. I'm not ready to, like, give them the massive boost that everybody probably wants them to have um, after beating the Rams. Again, the Rams getting beat is big for them. It's big for the division, and it's big for their playoff hopes. And they have playoff hopes, and that's the cool thing, I think, is that they have the ability to make the playoffs, Um, and I think that, you know, with them having the ability to make the playoffs, we're going to see a little bit of a different side of this 49ers. They're going to be more chippy. God, I hate yawning. Um, So with them being more chippy, they're going to, you know, play well. They're going to do what they need to do, and... I can't wait to see kind of how they develop and what they do to, you know, continue this up. They go against the Bills. They got a tough opponent. If they win, then I might shoot them up Um, in a good way, obviously. We got the Houston Texans at number 19. They're going to move up a single spot. They just, they took care of business. They creamed the the, the Lions. Easy as that. Um, Bears staying put. Again, their offense scored 20. Woo! <laughs> Uh, guys, the Bears scored 20 points. Oh, my God. But they gave up 41. So, they're <laughs> uh, if they lose to the Lions, they're going to drop. Um, that's that's a power movers game of the week. So, easy as that. Uh, we have the Carolina Panthers right below them. They're dropping a spot after their um, loss to the Vikings. Offensively, they did not play very well, but defensively, they kind of they're getting better uh, with their defense, and I'll be interested to see how this defense continues to perform, how they continue to play, um, what they continue to do. There's a lot of um, contingencies that this team has that I'll be interested to see, kind of how it plays out. Next, we got the Minnesota Vikings moving up a spot. Literally, they flip-flopped because they beat each other. Surprise. Um, then we got the, oh, Las Vegas Raiders dropping down two spots this week after getting just pummeled by the Atlanta Falcons in a terrible route that shouldn't have happened in all reality. But, you know, it happens sometimes. It just does work out that way. It do be like that. Um, but... We'll kind of see what happens and how it goes. Um, next, we have the Miami Dolphins. They're going to move up a spot after, you know, they're winning against the Jets. You beat the Jets, nothing much to comment on. Um, next, we have the Browns. Congratulations, you beat the Jaguars. Nothing much to comment on. You, you Like, literally, like, you beat the Jaguars. Cool. Um, next, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They're going to stay put despite the loss. Um... I'm still kind of hanging on to that thread of hope that maybe they're okay and maybe they're good enough. Um, I think this week they go against the Rams. They got to prove it. This is a they're in a very they're that 12, 12 is like that prove it situation, right? Um, and I've said it all year. Twelve is the prove it or lose it because 
you know, in my head, because it's been like this for many, many years, 12 is you're making the playoffs. You're a playoff caliber team. And while I see the Arizona Cardinals as a playoff caliber team, I don't really know if they're going to make the playoffs this year because if they continue to falter and, like, lose games where they shouldn't, they're not going to make it. Um, I figured that we'd have three teams make the playoffs in the NFC West, um, but now the Cardinals, if they lose again, depending on the margins, they're going to just drop off. The only reason they didn't drop um, a little bit this week was because, again, there was a, it was an Isaiah Simmons call um, and they might not have lost without that call. So, I could have given them one more week to kind of be in that prove-it spot, but if they lose again, they're dropping. Um, next, we got the Indianapolis Colts dropping a spot, and the Titans moving up a spot. We all know why they flip-flopped. The Titans beat the Colts in very bad fashion. It was not close. Um, but I still believe this team is a top, like, uh, like should be considered in the top 10 here soon. Um, the Ravens, again, they get that one week to be lucky, but depending on how bad that they beat this or how bad the Steelers game goes, it could be, um, a big fiasco for them and they could drop big. Um, next we got the Buffalo Bills staying still. Uh, play the Chargers exactly the way you want to. Limiting uh, the Chargers 17 points is a big deal. So congratulations to the Bills. They are definitely a top 10 team um, and continue to be that top 10 team. And I hope we get to see kind of... I want to see the Bills like progress in the playoffs. And I hope they can do that this season. Uh, next to the LA Rams... They're going to drop down two spots this week. Um, they just, yeah. I mean, as a divisional opponent, so I'm not going to, I can't knock on them too badly. But this was a game you absolutely needed to win, and you failed at doing it. But again, it was a last second field goal. So um, the only reason you're going down two spots is because of the other two teams here, um, which was the Buccaneers, who are going to stay put at seven. I think they played a better game than the Rams this week. Um, I think that, yeah, they lost to the Chiefs, but it was the Chiefs. They kept it close to the Chiefs um, and proved why, you know, they're not the worst team in the league. They're going to have a bye week. They're going to rest. Don't fret. Um, I still expect this team to lose one more game during the season. Um, I still expect this team to go 10-6. and six. Um, But they could easily go 11-5. and five. Um, It's really, are the Falcons going to play spoiler because they play the Falcons twice? Um, and I think that's where you're going to have your scare. You've got still three divisional games left and the Vikings. So it's not like you have an easy slate. You've got an aspiring playoff team and three divisional opponents. And I think that this will be their time to shine and we'll see what happens. Um, next we have the Baltimore Ravens. They're going to drop a spot, um, after, you know, the, I think there was just a team that really surprised me a lot and did really well. Um, and the Ravens, again, they were in position to where I, they could drop easily, um, depending on what happens. So, um, I didn't want to be like over predict the Steelers loss, but I, or the Steelers win, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I think that the, um, depending on the, the margin next week or they could, they could drop who knows, but I wasn't gonna, I was not willing to anticipate it and be like super wrong. <laughs> Um, next we have the Green Bay Packers, who is the team that we were, I was super impressed with this week, going up three spots after their 41 to 25 victory over the Bears. They played extremely well. They played like a top team. They played like a team that would make it to the NFC Championship game. Uh, and if they continue this, they're going to go far. They're going to go places. They're going to do things. And I would love to see how and what they end up doing to continue to improve. Um, next, we have the Seattle Seahawks staying at four. Um, beat Philly. They handled their business. Um, they did not play the best game of their life. But they are getting back into that like awesome like run the football, create the pass, do the stuff that they've been doing habitually to get them far in the playoffs. And honestly, 
now that Russell's got all these weapons that he can utilize at some point, I would love to have some home games in the playoffs. So now we're fighting for that. It's between us and the Saints and the Packers. Um, and speaking of the Saints, they're number three. Um, they, they're they going to be an interesting team to watch because who knows what Drew Brees is gonna, when Drew Brees is going to come back. Um, I think that, honestly, the Saints team is a really good team and can handle its own without Drew Brees if it needs to. doesn't want to, but if it needs to, it can. Um, so... Yeah, I'm keeping them at three. But yeah, these the, the Packers, Seahawks, and Saints are all fighting for that number one seed, in my opinion. Um, Rams could enter that conversation, but I think they've lost one too many games to be in that conversation. I don't see the Saints losing two games, um, personally. I see them losing... If they do lose two games, then that's going to be crazy, but um, I don't really see them losing two games. Um, but they could, but I don't see it. Um, next we have the Steelers at two, um, awaiting their game. They're currently up six to nothing after a <coughs> botched field or point at PAT. So good job. Um, and then we got the Chiefs who literally just played their lights out in the first and then just didn't have to worry in the second half. But anyway, that this was a quick, was a quick power rankings video, but I figured it was just because there was not a lot of teams that were actually moving and a lot of the teams that moved were just flip flops. Uh, but my power games of the week should probably talk about those. Um, are as follows. Number one is the Saints and the Falcons. They're a power mover game of the week because the Falcons have a lot to prove, um, want to get back in that conversation of being a good team. And if the Saints lose, then they know that they are potentially going to drop their number one seed. Um, next is going to be Browns and Titans. Um, that's a power moves game of the week, um, uh, for me as well. And the other game would be Cardinals and Rams. Those are my three power moves games of the week. Games that you should be watching. Um, and I think are going to be ultimately the three best games of the week. Um, hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day. Love you all. Peace.